Yeah, so uh, our objectives for this uh, session on dashboards is first of all to describe how we can navigate the DHIS2 dashboard, uh, to demonstrate how we can create and manage a dashboard in case we need to create our own dashboards and manage them. We're going to look at how we are able to do that, uh, how we can uh, add previously created tables, charts, and maps to the dashboard. Like we said, for the past uh, three days, we've looked at how we can create tables, charts, and maps. So we are going to see how we can add them to a single dashboard. And then uh, describe the concept of user organization units, uh, because different users are are given access to different organization units, and yet we need them to be able to access the same dashboard. So we are going to see how we can make use of that feature in, in DHIS2. And then finally, we're going to see how we can share these dashboards. So when we create dashboards, we do have people who we would like to continually access them. So we are going to see how we can grant people the right to access these dashboards and how uh, use of user organization units can supplement this sharing. So why should we create a dashboard in the first place? I do hope that we all understand what a dashboard is. So a dashboard basically shows us a summary of how a particular program or uh, yeah, how a particular program is performing. So it basically shows us the trends. It shows us uh, just a general picture of how a program is performing. So why do we need a dashboard? So that we can be able to easily see the charts and tables and maps that we use on a frequent basis. Uh, there might be particular tables, charts, or maps that we use frequently, and it would be a bit tedious to have to continuously go to the data visualizer app or go to the maps app in order to open those charts, maps, and tables. So the dashboards make us have an easy view of these uh, frequently used charts, tables, and maps. And then also we use these dashboards to quickly monitor program progress. So you'll find that for most uh, DHIS2 systems, once you log into the system, the first page you land on is the dashboard page. So one is able to have a quick view of how a particular program is progressing at the point of logging into the system. And since they have different charts, maps, and the tables that are representing data for this program, we are able to quickly monitor the progress of that program and then also to establish a routine for regularly checking the key program aspects so we have when we are monitoring program progress there are uh, key indicators that we like to look at so this dashboard enables us to have that routine where we can regularly check maybe you have a routine and you know that every morning uh, when I sit at my computer, the first thing I do is to check the dashboard and see the progress of this particular program. And then also readily share information with others. We do know that some of the system users um, will not be able to use data visualizer, will not be able to use uh, maps, will not be able to use pivot tables. But with a, dish, with a dashboard, we are able to easily share the information with them. How? They just know that they simply need to log into the system, access the dashboard, and they will be able to see the information on a particular program. And then finally, we can add spaces, texts, and messages on your dashboard. Sometimes you might want to have, uh, you send messages within DHIS2, so you can have those messages on the dashboard such that at login, uh, the people who need to read these messages are able to access them. So the dashboard overview, like we said, dashboard provides quick access to the different analytical objects, which are our charts, our maps, our tables to a particular user. So this uh, this in the image, we're able to see what a, what a dashboard looks like, an overview of what it looks like. You can morning, see that this is you? a malaria burden reduction dashboard. And it's, it has uh, different charts regarding malaria. You can see that we have ma malaria surveillance, the cases and the threshold. We're able to see the positivity rate over a period of time. So we are able to view that trend when we access this dashboard. We're able to see the testing trends over time. And we're able to also see the malaria and non-malaria deaths over time. So this is a quick view of what a dashboard can look like. You can see that anyone on the malaria program is able to access this dashboard and see the progress of the program, see the positivity activity rates, see the death rates, see the testing and all that. So uh, this dashboard can be shared with a user group. 
So it's not that uh, only particular users can see, you can choose to share it with a particular user group. For example, with your system, maybe you have a group of users that are on the malaria program. You can choose to share this dashboard with all the users on the malaria program within that user group. Um, so with the dashboard, as we have seen in the previous uh, slide, a dashboard should have a title. So this title helps us to understand what this dashboard is about. And then it should also have a description, which gives us deeper, deeper insight on what the dashboard is about. And then we can add any number of dashboard items. You're not limited to maybe five items or 10 items. You can add as many dashboard items as you need to have on your dashboard. Uh, by the dashboard items, I'm talking about the charts, the maps, uh, the tables, maybe you want to have resources on there so you can add as many as you need, okay? So the different type of dashboard items, we have charts, which uh, Dr. Prosper showed us how to create. We have maps, which uh, Tuzo took us through. Uh, we have reports. Then we have tables, which Hadi just showed us how to create. And then resources, we are going to look at how to create those in the second session of today. And then messages and text items. Um, above the dashboard, we have a control bar. So you can have within DHIS2, you can have more than one dashboard. Maybe you have different programs having their data entered into your DHIS2 system. So you can have different dashboards for the different programs. So above the dashboard, we have a control bar. You can see it up here. I hope you can see my cursor. So at the top here, you can see that we have different dashboards. We have the HIV district dashboard, HIV facility, HIV national immunization, and TB. And then you also have a search field because sometimes you might have so many dashboards and some people wouldn't want to have to go through the entire list of dashboards to find the dashboard they're interested in. So you can always search, you just type the name of the dashboard and find it. Then we have a plus button that enables us to create a new dashboard. This is the theory of it all, but we're going to have a live demo to see the practical side of things. Um, so the dashboard has two modes. Uh, view and edit and create. Remember we said that we can share and grant access to the dashboard to different people, different users in the system. We can also choose what kind of access we would like them to have on the dashboard. Uh, you could choose to give some people view only access, in which case they can only see the data on the dashboard, but they're not able to make changes to the, the layout of the dashboard. They're not able to make changes to the dashboard generally. And then you can also choose to give people edit and create rights to the dashboard. Um, yeah, so how do we create a new dashboard? Uh, like we said in the control bar, this is the control bar up here, the one that shows the different dashboards that are available in the system. Uh, we have a plus button that allows us to add a new dashboard. So when you click on that button, you're able to add a new dashboard. And uh, when you're adding a new dashboard, you're able to give your dashboard a title. You're able to choose the kind of layout you would like to have. You're able to give it a description. The description gives deta deeper details on the purpose of this dashboard. You're able to search for objects uh, that you would like to add to your dashboard. So. I remember when they were taking us through how we can create charts, how we can create tables, how we, how we can create maps, we were shown how we can actually save these items within the system. So we can actually save them, uh, remember the names that we saved them as, and then use this search bar to search for those different items that we created. And this is this also emphasizes why uh, we're told to prefix the names that we are giving to our chats so that we are able to recognize which ones, the particular ones that we are interested in. So after you have added the items, they show up at the bottom here and you're able to adjust the size and also the area where they appear on the dashboard. You're able to uh, adjust the arrangement of the items on the dashboard. And then uh, finally, you can save your changes by clicking that blue button at the top right hand corner, top left hand corner. And then you can also now have filter settings set for your particular dashboard. We're going to look at that uh, as we go through the live demo. So like we said, you can share your dashboard with others. You might create a dashboard and you know that there are particular people you work with in a particular program.
platform that needs to access that dashboard. So you can share that dashboard with others. Um, you could give private or public access. With public access, that means that everyone who logs into the system will be able to access that dashboard. With private access, you're giving uh, access to only particular users in the system. Um, additional considerations when we are creating the dashboard, uh, we have to consider dynamic objects. Uh, when we are creating a dashboard, it is very important that we have uh, dynamic periods on our dashboards, the relative periods. Uh, what do we mean by relative periods? These are the periods that keep, keep changing depending on the current date. For example, if I say this year, that means I'm talking about 2022. But come 2023, when I say this year, I'll be talking about 2023. Um, if I say this month, that means I'm currently talking about March. While in April, when I say this month, it will be referring to April. So those are the relative periods. So we usually encourage that when you create a dashboard, we make use of relative periods. Why? Because it is important that as the time changes, the data on your dashboard also reflects the changes within the times. It would be unfortunate to have a dashboard that is maybe set to 2020 and now come 2022, someone opens it and they're still looking at 2020 data. So we encourage the use of relative periods. And then um, we, we also encourage the use of user org unit. We are going to look at how we can set it to that. Because when we use user org unit, it means that when a user who needs to access the dashboard logs in, regardless of the org unit they are attached to, they will be able to see some data. For example, you will have a dashboard. Uh, maybe it's reflecting data for the uh, <coughs> malaria data. And you want anyone who logs in and they need access to malaria data, they're able to see the data based on the kind of access that they need to have. If they're attached to only a district level, they're able to see that district level data. If they're attached, only, they're attached to the country, they're able to see that national level data. Then uh, in static objects, they use fixed periods like monthly. For example, you're, you're, you're specifying a particular month or you're specifying a particular year. And then we have a filter that allows you to add any number of filters to the dashboard. So when, when you create your charts, your maps and your tables, you select a period when you're creating them. But then someone might access the dashboard and need to see this data for a different period. So as we're going to see, there are different filters on the dashboard. So one can filter to a period of interest. One can filter to an organization unit of interest. Yeah. Uh, this dash, uh, the DHIS2 dashboard is accessible on mobile. There is no app required and it works across all device types. How do we access this? We simply go to our browser on the mobile, on the mobile device, the smart mobile device. You go to your browser, you access uh, the link to the system and once you log in, you'll be able to see the dashboard. And we now have offline dashboard support. Uh, 2.37 of DHIS2. Uh, how does this offline dashboard support work? Uh, if, it, if a dashboard is set to offline mode, it is going to save this dashboard in the cache, the browser cache. And so if someone, provided someone hasn't logged out of the system, the next time they come and access the system, they'll be able to see the dashboard, whether they have internet or not. We are going to look at this also. Yeah, so that is, uh, that is the theory of the dashboards. Uh, we're now going to go into our live demo. So I hope we are able to see my screen. I hope we are able to see the dashboard within the training instance of DHIS2. <clears throat> so um, I would encourage that we follow so that we, we don't miss anything. We first follow and see what is being done. And then we can later pr practice by following the learner's guide. The learner's guide is available in Moodle and it can help you to follow the different steps after. 
um, if you have two screens, if you're fortunate enough to have two screens in front of you, you can go ahead and uh, watch and practice. But if you have one screen, we I encourage you to maybe first follow so that you don't miss out on any step. Yeah, so um, in front of us, we have uh, the dashboard. I'm accessing this from the academy.demos.dhis2.org, the one we were given uh, access to on day one. So the first thing we're going to look at is the entire dashboard interface. What do we have on the interface in front of us? For now, I'm going to focus on the HIV national uh, dashboard. So you can see that we have uh, different dashboards on the control bar up here. We have HIV burden, HIV district, immunization. So we are using the HIV national dashboard and you can see that um, with this dashboard, we have uh, different items attached to it. We have some bar charts showing us the HIV cascade, HIV cascade by gender, we have a bar chart showing us the art coverage. We have some maps on there. We have a table on this dashboard. Um, so you can notice that within the control bar, some of the dashboards have a star on them while others do not. So sometimes you might want a particular dashboard to be the first dashboard uh, within this list. Okay, you might want it to be the first dashboard within this list. And in order to do that, you can star it. So you can see on this dashboard next to the word HIV national on the left side, we have a star. So if I attach the star to it, if I start it, you see that now it has moved its position from where it was. It is now the, the third because the first two are also start. So I think it has put the, the start dashboards in alphabetical order. Well, if I remove the star, it's going to move back to that position. So you can choose which dashboards, maybe there are some dashboards that are priority. So you can choose to star them so that they appear first. Yeah, and then, um, so you're able to access all the dashboards you need from here. Sometimes there might be so many dashboards that they're not listed on uh, some of them don't show in this list. So we have this arrow on the control bar. There's an arrow there and that arrow allows you to show more dashboards. So if you click on that arrow, you see that we were not previously seeing this DRTB, this uh, TBHIV and TBHIV annual dashboard. So this uh, show more arrow allows you to be able to see more dashboards, okay? Um, So with on, on the dashboard, we have a button here that is written on more, okay? So the more button allows us to access several additional features such as viewing the description of the dashboard and as well printing the dashboard. So you might want to see, maybe I'm seeing this HIV national dashboard, but I don't quite understand what it's about. So I could click show description to see further information on this dashboard. So when I click show description, you see that now I can see that this dashboard covers areas of the HIV program focusing on HIV cascade and ART, okay? I can choose to also hide the description again. So that is accessed by going to more and then you show description, okay? The printing, we're going to look at it as we move ahead. Uh, remember we said that on the control bar, we have a search. Sometimes you have so many dashboards and you don't want to look through the list to get the one you're interested in. So you can use this search at the top left hand that search for a dashboard. So I could search for RM. You see that it has it is now showing me only the RMNCAH dashboard. So that is how the search is used on the control bar. Okay. Then we also have a filter. Remember, we said that much as we have these charts, these tables created, sometimes someone might want to maybe look at a particular organization unit, or they might want to look at a different period that, than what is, uh, what is represented on the charts. So in order to do that, uh, we have a button here that says add filter, okay? So when you go to add filter, you can go to your organization unit. If you want to maybe look at a particular organization unit. For example, in this training instance, I might want to look at data that is only for animal region. So I go to my add filter, I go to organization units. You see that it has brought me a, 
a window, a small window that has the organization unit hierarchy. And there is training land. Next to the word training land, we have an arrow pointing right. So you can click on that arrow. Since we said we want to look at animal region, I can click on the box next to animal region. And now animal region is selected and I confirm. So you can see that now I'm only seeing data that is for animal region. Even the map is showing only animal region. The trends are only showing animal region. Yeah, so we have filtered by a particular organization unit. And you can see that at the top here, it shows you a black box that shows you what you have filtered by, okay? So that you're able to tell that, oh, now I'm looking at data for only this particular region. So you're able to see from that black box, okay? So you might want to filter by a period. Maybe I want to look at data for a different period. Maybe I want to look at the data as by November, 2021. So I still go to my add filter. I select period, okay? And you can see here we have relative and fixed periods, okay? Remember we said the relative periods are the ones that keep changing. You can see here we have months, we have last month, this month, but we said we're interested in November, 2021, okay? So it, we are going to go to a fixed period because that is a fixed period. And then we can see here the period type we have monthly. So you can, depending on what is what you're interested in, you can go to weekly, quarterly, six monthly, yearly, financial year, okay? But uh, since we want a month of November, we're going to leave it at monthly. And then you can also switch to your year of interest. So we said we want 2020. One. So I'm going to select 2021. I double click on November 2021. It is now showing under my selected periods. And then I confirm. So you can see that now I'm able to see the data for animal region. You can see the black box up here, animal region, and for November 2021. And then you're able to see that all the charts and all the tables are now focused on uh, November 2021 and for that particular region, okay? So if I want to remove the filters and go back to the default for that dashboard, I can always click on remove. You see that for each filter, we have a button of remove. So you can remove and remove. And now it takes us back to the default appearance of the dashboard, okay? Okay. So for each, uh, for each item on the dashboard, we are able to have a description, okay? So yes, a description. I remember that when we were saving the chats, we were told that uh, you put a name and then you put a description to describe what your, uh, your chat you're saving is about or what your table you're saving is about. So in order to access, maybe I have found a chat on the HIV casket and I need to find out more about what, what it's about you see that for every item on the dashboard, on the top right hand corner of that item, you have those three dots, okay? So when you click on those three dots, you're able to see an option of show details and interpretations. So if I click on show details and interpretations, you can see that now I have more details about this particular item. I can see that this HIV cascade shows me the HIV positive tests, the people living with HIV who are newly on art, people living with HIV who are retained on treatment over the past 12 months. And it is used for monitoring HIV program effectiveness for test and treat policy and retention on treatment over time. So we can see that that is what this chat is about, okay? And then uh, people have it, uh, an option of adding an interpretation. Maybe they need to... Oh. They need to get more information hello, on hello. this chat. Maybe they have a question about this chat. So here, hello. under interpretations, they are able to put their comments hello. there. Okay. Maybe they are able to ask that how come the number retained is is uh, is low. Okay. So you can always put your interpretations down there. Okay. And then also, much as you have uh, many dashboard uh, items, maybe you have many, many 
many things represented in a particular chart and you want to focus on one particular thing, you're also able to do that. So the dashboard items are very interactive, okay? And this is for the charts, the maps and the tables. So for example, if we look at this, uh, this second chart here, the HIV cascade, okay? You can see that in our legend here, we have animal region and we have food region, okay? So you see that if I, over, if I hover over animal region, it is, going to, uh, it is going to make the food region a bit lighter and then make the animal region bold so I can focus on it. If I over, hover over food region, it's going to do the same. But if I want to particularly look at only animal region, within my legend, I can always click on animal region. Sorry, if I want to look at only food region, I can always click on animal region and it's going to hide the bars for animal region and only show me the data for food region. If I want to look at only food uh, animal, I click on food and then it will show me only the data for animal region. So I, can, I have the capability of hiding what I do not want to see on a particular dashboard item. If I don't want to see food region, I click on it, it will hide it, show me only animal region. If I don't want to see animal region, I can always click on it, it will hide it and show me only food region. So these uh, dashboard items are very interactive. Uh, they allow a user to, to interact with them and get to see exactly what they are interested in. Um, the same goes for the tables. Uh, when you have the tables, you might want to sort, you can see that we have our table here on the art performance. It has... Uh, uh, people living with HIV new on art, people living with HIV current on art, and all those data, data items, but it also has the different uh, districts under the OK units. So you might want to sort these, uh, the rows based on a particular column. Maybe you want to sort them based on the number of people living new, uh, with HIV who are new on art. So in that case, you see that uh, for every column, we have those two arrows, one pointing up and one pointing down. So you can use them to sort based on uh, that particular column. For example, if I click on the arrow facing down, you can see that it has sorted based on the number of people who are new on art, and it has sorted them from the district with the lowest number going to the district with the highest number. That is if I click on the arrow pointing up. If I click on the arrow pointing down, it is going to sort from the district with the highest number down to the district with the lowest number. So you have that capability with the tables on the dashboard. You're able to sort them uh, based on your column of interest. Then for the maps, while they allow you to show the legend, you can uh, hover over them to see more detailed information on the map. For example, if I look at the art retention map, okay, if I hover over it, you can see that it's showing me that Staple District has a 70.8 retention rate. Uh, Desert, Desert District has 84.2 retention rate. Vegetable District has 81.6. So you're able to hover over a map to get uh, more detailed information on a particular area of the map. Okay, and then also you might want maybe maybe your your dashboard item has a lot of data represented, and you want to see it in a bigger view. Okay, so you're able to view each individual dashboard item in full screen. Okay, and how we how do we do that? Still, when you go to each individual dashboard item, you see that on the top right hand corner we have those three dots. And if you click on those three dots, you have an option of view full screen. So if I go to this HIV cascade by gender item and I click view full screen, you can see that now it is showing me that particular item in full screen. So I am able to see it in a, a more clear in a more clear way. Okay. If I want to exit the full screen, I can always click escape and it will take me back to the dashboard okay then i am also able to change and view different dashboard items 
uh, in different ways. Maybe I have an item that is shown as a map, but I want to view it as a chart. So the dashboard allows me to also do that. So for example, if I look at this art retention rate map, I might want to view this map as a chart, okay? So I can always do that. Uh, like uh, as previously mentioned, each dashboard item on the top right hand side has uh, three dots, okay? So you click on those three dots and you see that you have options of view as chat and view as table. So you can either view the items as a chat or as a table. So if I view this map as a chat, you can see that now I am able to see the number, the retention rates per district on a chart. If I click again, I can go back to view as map to see it as a map again, or I can view as table, okay? So uh, there's that flexibility with the dashboard items. You can view them uh, in different output types, okay? So as previously mentioned, uh, DHIS2 allows for us to print these dashboards, okay? Maybe you want to have them uh, on the notice board somewhere, or you want to, to share it with somebody, you can always print it, okay? So at the top, just below the control bar, we have our button that says more, that drop down there. And if you click on that drop down, you'll see that you have an option for print. So if you click on print, you have two options. You can either select to print as, a as the dashboard layout, or you can choose to print one item per page. So when you're printing dashboard layout, what does that mean? That means that you would like to print the entire dashboard as it appears, okay? As it appears with each chart uh, where it is appearing. Uh, one item per page, that means that each of the dashboard items is going to be printed as a separate page. I'm going to start with the option of dashboard layout. If I go to print and I go to dashboard layout, you see that now it is giving me this option, this uh, print preview, okay? And you'd see the dashboard title, you're able to see the charts, okay? You see that it's putting the charts the way that they appear on the dashboard, okay? And if I want to go ahead and print, here on the right side, I have a button that says print. So I click on print, I select my printer that I would like to print to, and I go to print, okay? If I want to go back to the dashboard at the top here, we have an option of exit print preview. It's going to take me back to the dashboard. Then we have an option of printing one item per page. Still, we go to our more print one item per page. That means that every item, every chart, every map, every table is going to be printed individually on a single page, okay? So you can see in the print preview, that now the HIV cascade is on its page, HIV cascade by gender is on its own page. Uh, yeah, HIV second and third is on its own page at coverage. You can see that the maps are all on their own page. So that is what it means to print one item per page, okay? And still you can go ahead and go to your print button, select your printer and print. So I can go back by going exit print preview, okay? So that is how uh, we are able to print our dashboards. You might want to print and have it on a notice board somewhere, or you might want to print and have it, uh, maybe give it to someone, a superior or someone, okay? And then finally, how do we make our dashboards available offline? Remember we said that DHIS2 now has this capability. You can make the dashboard available offline. In that case, uh, the dashboard is saved in the browser cache. And then whenever you come back to the system, provided that uh, the user has not logged out of the system, they will be able to access this dashboard. Now, how do we make them available? offline. So when you select the dashboard that you want to make available offline and you go to your button that says more, okay, you click on more, you see that you have an option of make available offline. So if I click make available offline, you see that now this dashboard right next to the word HIV national on the control bar at the top, they've put, uh, there's an indicator there showing that this particular dashboard is available 
offline. So even if I lose internet connectivity, even if I disconnect from the internet, uh, maybe I've left office, I get home, I am able to access this dashboard provided that I have not logged out, okay? So I'll be able to access this dashboard even without a connection to the internet, okay? If I want to remove this dashboard from being available offline, still I select the dashboard, I go to more, and then I go to remove from offline storage, okay? So now it will no longer be available offline, okay? So that is a brief overview of the dashboard layout. Before we go to creating dashboards, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions or is it well understood before we move on to the step of creating new dashboards? All very good. Yes, Rebecca? Um, um you dashboard okay so in order to add a new dashboard uh still on our control bar up we have at the left end we have a button that has a plus sign and this button allows us to create a new dashboard okay so we just click on that button it's going to bring us to a page where we can create the new dashboard. Now this page here has uh, different buttons on it. It has a section where we can enter the title of the dashboard. It has a section where we can give our dashboard a description, okay? It has a section where we can choose the layout style. And then uh, it has a, another section where we can search for the items that we would like to add to this dashboard, okay? So the first thing we do is give our dashboard a, a title, okay? So we're going to give our dashboard a title. Maybe we can say uh, HIV tests, okay? And then we can type in a description. We talk about what this dashboard is displaying. And then we can search for the items that we would like to add to this dashboard, okay? So maybe I could search for a table that is uh, labeled S and D. Please remember that this, uh, the name that appears here is dependent on the way that that particular item was saved in visualizer or in maps, the name that it was given. We saw that we can go to, within visualizer, you can go to file and then you go to save. So the name that you give when you're saving, is the name that you search for here, okay? So I have searched for the HIV tests performed right next to the name of the, of the chart, of the table, there is the word insert. So I can click on insert and you can see that it has added it here, okay? I can choose where I want new items to be added to, okay? I can choose because uh, I can choose whether I want the new items I'm adding to be put at the beginning of the dashboard or at the bottom, okay? There might be times maybe you want to add something to your dashboard, okay? But you don't want it to be at the top of the dashboard, so you can leave it at the end of dashboard so that every new item you add goes to the bottom as opposed to the top of the dashboard, okay? So I have added this table to my dashboard, okay? But I can choose also to adjust the size of the table. You can see that we have added this table of HIV tests performed within public facilities, but some of the data on the right end of the table is not being seen because of the size of the table. So we can adjust the size of this table by uh, hovering over the bottom right-hand corner, the bottom right-hand corner of the item. You see that uh, it changes into an arrow pointing outwards, and then you can, adjust accordingly, okay? So you can see that now I have adjusted it to a size where all the data is able to be seen, okay? Then it's the same if you have multiple items on the dashboard, you can always, when you at the top of the dashboard, when you hover over there, you see that a double arrow shows and you can drag and drop to where you want the item to appear on the dashboard, okay? 
then we have an option of filter settings at the top here okay i hope we are all able to see that button that says filter settings okay so you can choose what you want uh, users to be able to filter by on the dashboard okay this is especially applicable in cases where you have uh, maybe some of the data has category combinations or maybe you have particular organic groups okay so you you want uh the user to only be able to see the filters that are applicable to that particular dashboard okay for example maybe you have an hiv dashboard okay you have an hiv dashboard but then also within the system you have maybe age groups that are particular to malaria okay and you don't want a user to have to be able to see those malaria age groups in the filters because they're going to confuse them so you can choose what particular filters you want to have on the dashboard you remember you remember when we were looking at the overview of the dashboard layout we said that we have different filters so you can choose which ones you want to have so if you go to filter settings you have two options allow filtering by all dimensions or only allow filtering by selected dimensions so if i click only allow filtering by selected dimensions you can see that uh, these are the available filters okay period and organization unit is already selected by default because that is applicable to almost every dashboard okay but you can see that here we have filters of uh, age tb age tb legacy age malaria okay so if it is a malaria dashboard there is no reason why these HTB filters should be showing on it because it is simply going to con uh, confuse the users, okay? If it is a TB dashboard, there is no reason why I should have malaria filters showing. So you're able to choose the particular filters that are applicable to your dashboard, okay? So I may pick urban rural and I pick type and I confirm, okay? Okay? Let me... So if I save changes here, if I save, I have saved my dashboard. If I go to add filter, you will see that I'm only able to see the dimensions of type and urban rural, which is what I selected, okay? Well, if I go back to the HIV national dashboard and I go to the filter, you see that I am able to see all these other dimensions, the HTB, age malaria with unknown sex, okay? So when I'm creating a dashboard, I am able to select the particular filters that I want to be applicable to that dashboard. And that is dependent on the kind of data I have on that dashboard, okay? So I have to ensure that the filters I am having there are not going to confuse the other users, okay? Um, okay. So once you have saved your dashboard, you can uh, use it. You can use it across many users. So different users can be able to access your dashboard, okay? I am going to use an example. Remember we talked about using user or units, okay? So I can set the items on my dashboard in a way that when I'm creating them, in a way that um, any user, regardless of the access rights, the organization unit access rights they have, they're able to access the dashboard items, okay? If I give an example of the malaria burden dashboard, this malaria burden reduction dashboard, if I click on it, you see that we have different charts that are appearing for training land, okay? So if I open a single chart there, I'm going to open this uh, malaria positivity chart. I go to those uh, three dots, okay? I am able to open it in the data visualizer app, okay? So when I open it in data visualizer app and I go to the organization unit selection, you can see that at the top here, what was selected is the user organization unit. So what does this mean? This means that when a user accesses this particular chart, it is going to show them data that is specific to the organization unit that they have rights to, okay? For example, if a user is only attached to animal region, okay? That means that when they access it, they're only going to see animal region data as opposed to attaching it to training land. Because if I attach it to training land, it means that now this particular user who has access to only animal region, 
when they open it, they're not going to access anything on that item because it is tied to training land. So we use the options of user or unit to make a particular dashboard item accessible to any user, regardless of the organization unit that their account is attached to. So you see that we have different options here. We have user organization unit, we have user sub units, user sub times two units, okay? So user organization unit, that means that if someone is attached to animal region, they're only going to see the data for, and that, sorry, when they're attached to animal region, when they open it, it's going to be showing data for animal region, okay? If they use user subunits, when someone opens and the person is attached to animal region, it is going to show the data disaggregated by the districts under animal region. So it is going to go a lower level because animal region is a region. It's going to go to the district level, okay, and disaggregate the data based on the districts under animal region. And the same goes to sub times two. It's going to go to the lower, lower level okay so we usually encourage use of user organization units so that a dashboard is reusable across multiple users so that you don't find that you have to create a dashboard for each maybe you have users who are district level and then you find you have to create a dashboard for each district we don't have to go through that hassle we make use of this uh, user organization unit so that a user is able to access a dashboard item regardless of the access rights that they have, the organization unit access rights, okay? So, okay? So I'm going to go back to my uh, malaria burden reduction dashboard, okay? Uh, we said that we have also an option of sharing, okay? Okay, so you can choose who you want to see this dashboard. You can choose whether you want your dashboard to be a public dashboard or you want it to be accessible to only particular users, okay? And in order to do that, we have this button here that is a share button, okay? It enables you to choose who you want to have access to a dashboard. If I click on share here, it has brought me this window, okay? So I can either share with a particular user or a particular user group, okay? Usually it's easier to share with a user group so that you don't have to select each individual user separate. So it's easier to share with a user group, okay? So maybe I want to share with... Uh, with uh, the district managers, okay? So I can search for the user group, district managers, okay? And then I can choose, I can choose what kind of access I want them to have to the dashboard. I can choose whether I want them to have only view only access to the dashboard, or I want them to have rights to edit the dashboard, okay? It's very important to know who you're giving edit rights to the dashboard because you wouldn't want to find the dashboard you've created has gotten uh, shaky or messed up. So you can choose whether you want to give someone view only access or you want them to have view and edit access. Okay, so I select view only and then right next to that there is a button that says give access. Okay, so you can see that here we have uh, the different people or the different groups that have access to this dashboard that currently have access to this dashboard, they are listed here. So you can see that all users have view only access. That means that everyone who logs into the system, okay, will be able to see this dashboard, but they're not able to make changes to it, okay. And then we have the malaria admin group that has a view and edit rights to the dashboard okay then we have the district managers who we have just given and they have only view rights to the dashboard i might want to change it to view and edit i can still uh, when i find them here in the list i can still go to choose what kind of access they should have i might even want to remove their access so i can select remove access okay Okay, 
So now we have granted access to the malaria, so the, sorry, to the district managers. And we have also established that the chats on this table sorry the chats on this dashboard the items on this dashboard are assigned uh, the organization unit assigned is user or unit okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to log out okay i'm going to log out and log in again with an account that is tagged to only cut district okay if i log out and i log into the cut district manager account and i sign in okay and I go to the malaria burden reduction dashboard, you see that it is showing me data of cut district, okay? Because user organization unit was selected, it is going to show based on the access rights that, uh, based on the access rights that an account has, okay? So if I log out and I log into an account that is tagged to staple district, Okay, I log into Stepo District Manager. And I go back to my malaria burden reduction dashboard. You see that it's still showing me, it's showing me Stepo District data. Okay, in which cases, some cases there is no data. Okay, so we can see that with the use of uh, user org unit, it enables us if we are saving our dashboard items, maybe we've created a map or we've created a, a chart or we've created a table. When we use user org unit, it allows multiple users to be able to access the dashboard and make use of the data on the dashboard. Okay. Okay, so I think that's majorly it from the dashboard session.